In today's video, we'll be experimenting to see if you can cast mercury in resin. We'll aim to find out whether it can be done, whether it reacts with the resin, and if it works, what a final piece will look like once the resin has hardened. As you can see, mercury is as fluid as water at room temperature. It's also very heavy. To start with, I'm going to have a bit of a play with the mercury to get a sense of what it's like as a material. And what I first see is that separate drops combine when they come into contact with each other. So I would assume the same will happen with two drops that meet when in resin. Another thing I observe is the mercury moves around a lot. It slides across this surface as though there's little to no friction. This could be a problem when trying to cast it in resin as I'll need it to stay in the centre of a mould, away from the edges. So I had a bit of fun here trying to get the mercury back into the bottle once I'd finished with it, but I did soon figure it out. To cast the mercury in resin, I need to find a way to measure it out in drops and assume I could do this using a pipette, but this doesn't seem to work with the pipettes I have, which I think is to do with the weight of the mercury versus the negative pressure in the pipette. To solve the problem, I'm going to use a syringe with a small silicon tube. This draws up the mercury and enables it to be dispensed in drops with a reasonable degree of control. So now we have a way of dispensing the mercury, we're ready to start casting. First, I'm going to pour a base layer of resin and let that harden. I'm using polyester resin, which I mixed off camera. Now the base layer is hardened, I'm pouring a very thin layer of resin over the top of that to stop the mercury from moving around in the mould, which is one of the characteristics we identified earlier. Hopefully this will keep it away from the edges. The first thing I'm going to do is add drops of mercury to one half of this mould in the shallow layer of resin I've just poured. I'm then going to fill the mould and add drops of mercury to the other side to see if there is any difference between adding drops of mercury in resin versus adding drops to the surface of the resin. One thing I notice straight away is the mercury is forming separate drops rather than joining together into one large drop, which is what I'd assumed earlier. So having added drops to this side, I now fill up the mould and will drop mercury into the resin on the other side and we'll see if that's any different. On a side note, if you're enjoying the video so far, I'd really appreciate if you liked and subscribed. I'm a very small channel and it would really help me out. So immediately I can see we're getting a very different effect here by dropping the mercury into resin as it's forming small ball-shaped drops rather than the large less uniform shapes previously created. They look quite like ball bearings. Here I'm trying to see what happens if you manipulate the mercury while it's in resin, as I want to clump the drops closer together if possible. You can move the drops a little and they mostly retain their shape, but they won't merge and form a large single drop. Now the resin has hardened, I can take it out of the mould, but I notice straight away that the mercury is less shiny than it was when it was first added to the resin, and it has a dull gunmetal type grey appearance to it. Turning the piece over, I really like how it looks on the other side, as the mercury is flat and the shapes of the drops are more distinctive. It's also remained shiny. So I'm not sure whether you'd know it was mercury in resin unless you were told. You could melt a soft metal such as lead or aluminium and make some drops before casting them in resin, and that may not look much different. Now my plan is to cut a keyring shaped piece from the casting and sand and polish that. 
I'm going to do this for the right side of the mould as I like them more because the shapes are interesting. And apologies for the background noise, I think that's my neighbour jet washing their patio. So here I'm refining and smoothing the shape by hand with wet and dry paper. Unfortunately I missed filming the shaping of the piece on camera, which I did freehand on a belt sander. Most of the resin pieces I make are square or rectangular in shape, so I'm just sanding flat surfaces, but this is the first shaped piece I've sanded in years, which I've quite enjoyed. After sanding I had to drill a hole for the keychain. I took my time over this as I didn't know how the resin would behave and I was worried it may crack. I also countersunk the hole to graduate the opening a little. All I have left now is to polish the final piece. So here it is. I think it looks pretty good and it was a fun experiment to carry out. My only concern though is its practical use when considering the expansion of the mercury. As you probably know, mercury is used in thermometers due to its expansion during temperature changes. And so if the mercury expands too much, it could crack the resin and leak out, which being toxic is not good. I guess I'll have to put it somewhere hot and see what happens. Mercury poisoning aside, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please let me know what you thought of the experiment in the comments, and I hope to see you at the next one.